everyone, I'm Sajan Aldridge, the Director of Communications here at Hope, and I want to thank you for joining us online this Sunday. Before we start service today, we want to get you plugged in with some ways you and your family can be staying engaged with us and continuing to grow spiritually from home. If this is your first time experiencing Hope, we are so glad you're watching with us today and we would love to connect with you. You can fill out a digital connect card by visiting our website at gfhope.org connect or on the welcome page of our Hope Church app. To download the free Hope Church app today, just text the keywords GF Hope app to 77977. This is a great tool for everyone to stay connected with events, updates, watch sermons, submit prayer requests, give digitally, take notes, view our media, and more. For the time being, we have moved our kids, youth, and adult ministries online. We want to make sure you're connected and engaged spiritually and relationally, even though we're not together physically. Be checking back on the Hope Church mobile app and our website, gfhope.org, for relevant updates and announcements. Also, be keeping an eye out on your email inbox for messages from Hope and our various ministry areas about how you can stay involved. At Hope, we also have access to Right Now Media, which is a free tool with tons of great resources for all ages, from Bible studies to devotionals to study guides and more. To sign up for a free Right Now Media account, head to our website, scroll down and click Right Now Media, then click Sign Up for Right Now Media to create a free account. On our app, you can sign up the same way by clicking Right Now Media from the home page or under the Media tab. To give digitally today, you can do so quickly and easily. We have several easy options. One, you can visit our website's giving page where you will be prompted with a set of options such as recurring or one-time giving, selecting the amount, and more. Two, you can give on the Hope Church app by clicking the Give icon to which you will be prompted with the same set of options. And three, you can text to give from your phone by texting the keyword GF Hope to the number 77977. Have a question or need someone to talk to or pray with you? Just fill out a Connect card online or in the app with your questions, or feel free to call or email the church office Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can also submit your prayer requests and praises on our website's prayer page under our About tab, or on the app, you can submit prayer requests right from the homepage. Our staff, as well as a dedicated team of individuals, is committed to praying for your requests. As usual, keep staying connected with us on our website, the app, and our Facebook page to stay up to date and feel free to reach out to Hope whenever you need. This is also an important opportunity to be reaching out to one another in this time of social distancing. Remember that social distancing does not mean relational distancing. We're all in this together, so let's go be the church.
you're here. One of the things we do every year at Hope Church on Easter is we say, He is risen, and we have you respond with a resounding, He is risen indeed. So we're going to try that, okay? Try it with me. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Come on! You know, we are so glad you're here you're at to join us in worship so let's join our voices to, together and declare the glory of him who saved us who breaks the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger 
the King of glory, the King above all kings, who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in long wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Come on, sing it up. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be set. Tremble, Jesus, Jesus. 
the shadows can't deny your name.
Thank you for bringing us out of darkness and bringing us into your marvelous light. We praise you, Father, and we praise you, Son, and we praise you, Holy Spirit, and all God's people together said, Amen. You know, it's great news by his blood, and in his name, we are free. Because of this freedom, we're going to continue worshiping him today through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. And if you're a visitor, welcome. We're glad you're here, but feel free not to give. And if you're a regular attender, you'll find several giving options on your screen. However you choose to give, the Bible reminds us not to give out of reluctance, or out of obligation, but out of a heart that's full of thankfulness for all he has done.
see that verse, I, I want to share it with us again. It says this, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. I don't think they had a clue at that point. I really don't. I don't think they, they understood what had happened. I don't think they understood the magnitude of the power that had been expressed on their behalf in that moment. It's like a lot of us when we think about life and we think about death and we think about sin and we think about Jesus and we underestimate the power of who he is and what he's done. I think if a lot of us get caught up in all kinds of different ways about Easter and we, we ha- we, we've been told, we've heard, but we underestimate, we, we misunderstand really what has happened. I, I've done that in a lot of things. I, I'm going to tell you a little story uh, about me misunderstanding or mi- me uh, underestimating the power of something. I was changing a light in my dining room, which for me is like, I, I should know better, right? It, it, it was like, I, I had heard about electrical power, right? I had heard all those things, and I, I knew enough to turn off the circuit bro- breaker. I, I didn't know uh, I hadn't turned off the right one, but I, I, I went up into my dining room, and I got on the chair, and I took down the lamp, and the wires were hanging there, and the lamp was hanging. It was swinging on those little red things that you screw in, and it's hanging there, and, and I unscrewed that one, and I unscrewed that one, and then I twisted off the wires on this one. I twisted it. It was good to go. Good to go. The, the old lamp was sitting there. I went to hang the new lamp. I wired it up there, and I took the wires, and I screwed them in with that little red cap on the one, and then I did the next one, and poof, I'm not kidding. It knocked me off the chair onto the floor. My kids were looking. Dad, what's the matter? I thought I was going to die. The power was so magnificent. I had no idea. I misunderstood. I'd been warned. I'd been told. But I had underestimated it. And here's the truth. Had it been a little bit more reckless, had it been a little bit more powerful, it could have killed me. And here's the truth. If you underestimate the power of Jesus to save you and to give you life, it could result in your eternal demise. The the ladies were standing at the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want us to underestimate the power of what this day is all about or to underestimate or misunderstand the meaning of it. This is a magnificent, this is a glorious, this is, this is a once forever kind of day. This is the day when Jesus demonstrated all of his power, all of the strength, all of the awesomeness of God. He was crucified, dead, and buried, and rose again from the grave. And I hear people every once in a while say things like this. I heard someone recently on television say, well, Christianity is just a philosophy. Let me just tell you this. Christianity is not a philosophy. I heard someone say about the resurrection of Jesus. They they said, and I've actually heard this several times, and maybe some of you think this, but I I, want to help you not misunderstand. I've heard people say this, that the resurrection was more of a spiritual thing, not a real thing. That, that, That he rose in their hearts The ladies are at the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were not looking for some kind of spiritual experience. In fact, when when later on when we hear about the disciples, the disciples were not like thinking, oh, we'll have him rise in our hearts. Right? The resurrection, it's, it's not about a set of moral teachings. It's not like we believe Jesus rose like in our minds, or he had the power to teach us how to like, bring our life back to some meaning or some power. Or it, it, it's, it's not about following a set of teachings. The resurrection isn't about being religious. religious. It, it's, it's not about like, trying to somehow figure out how to reach God. That's not what the resurrection's about. The resurrection isn't about um, an emotional thing. You know, in worship or in times of, uh, I've seen this in concerts that have nothing to do with Jesus. We get all worked up. We get all psyched up. We get all in a frenzy. And some people think that's what happened to the disciples. They got themselves all worked up. Let me tell you what this day is about. 
This day is about a physical resurrection from the dead. He was crucified. He was dead. He was buried. And he rose again from the grave. This is a day of the demonstration of God's power. It was a physical resurrection. It was a in real time resurrection. This is a historical event. We're not called to follow a philosophy, a moral teaching, a religion, an emotional thing. We are called to follow Jesus, the risen Savior, the one who has conquered sin, death, and the devil. Here's what I'm praying for. I'm praying that you don't underestimate the power of who Jesus is for you. I'm praying that you don't misunderstand what he has done for you. I'm actually praying that for myself because to be honest, I think there's many times in my own life that I underestimate the power of what he wants to do. That I misunderstand who he really is and I get all caught up. I'm praying that in this day, when we are watching from our homes or our cars or on tablets or on phones or however we're watching, I'm praying that this would be a day of clarity for us. That some of us who've been running so hard so long would find out that God deeply loves you and that you would turn to him. I pray for some of us that that feel like I have so ruined my life that God would never have me back. That you'd realize that the very power of the resurrection has the power to bring you back home. I I pray that those of you, those of us who feel like, "Ah, my life is just, like it amounts to like a wisp in the wind. It feels like nothing. That you'd realize how amazing God is and how he could give you some meaning to your life. I want to read a longer passage of Scripture. It's found in the Gospel of Luke. Matter of fact, the story of the resurrection is found in all four of the biographies of Jesus. This one is in the Gospel of Luke, and it's in chapter 24, and I want to just read it for us, and I'm going to try not to interrupt myself, but I get so excited when I read. Luke 24, beginning with verse 1. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, The women took spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, they bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day he will rise again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like, like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. And when he went away, wondering to himself, what happened? I think some of us, that's what we do. That's what we think. That's what we wonder about God. What in the world is happening? That at first, it seems so hard to believe that what people say about Jesus could be true. That what people say about you and Jesus could be true. And it is. He's proved his power to be able to make what's said about him true. He's proved through his power that we can believe him, that we can trust him. I'm going to take a moment to pray, and then I want to jump into several statements about about what is true because of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for the day that we remember that your son Jesus was crucified, that he really, really was dead. God, for me, that feels horrible. But I know, I I know what's coming next. I know that you and your power exerted 
that Jesus is resurrected. So God, I pray that you would speak to us today. God, by the power of the name of your son, Jesus, that you would change us. Amen. You know, when the disciples pondered and thought about it, just like us, they, maybe some of them, well, all of them, they didn't, they didn't believe it at first. They investigated. They looked at it. They studied. And Jesus appeared to them. Over 15 times in the New Testament, we see stories of Jesus appearing. Jesus appearing to Mary. Jesus appearing to the disciples. Jesus appearing to Thomas. Jesus appearing to the disciples on the shore, and he made him breakfast. I think that's kind of cool. Can you imagine what that meant? Like Jesus there frying up some fish and maybe some potatoes. I don't know what he, what he like. I don't know what he did, right? And he's, hey, you guys want some breakfast? And they walk over and they're like freaked out because they realize this isn't a ghost. This isn't an imagination. This is Jesus. And it changed their entire lives. Here's what I'm hoping and praying. That the news of who Jesus is, that you will no longer underestimate or misunderstand his power. Here's what's true because of the resurrection. Because of the power of the resurrection, Jesus has the power to forgive me. Jesus has the power to forgive me. He has the power to take all of the sin, all of the ugly, all of the rotten, all of the the horrible, all of the sick, all of the demented, all of the the mediocre, all all of the junk in my life that offends the Father. And to wash that clean, he has the power to forgive me. Listen to this passage from 1 Peter 2, verse 24 to 25. He committed no sin, referring to Jesus, he committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins on his cro- body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. He himself bore our sins. You know, the idea of the cross is that that Jesus died for our sin. That makes sense to many of us, that, that because our sin was so offensive to God, our sin had to be paid for. But you know, anybody could say that. Anybody could do that. What Jesus did was he died, and then he demonstrated the power to forgive through his resurrection. He had been challenged before about whether he had the power to forgive or not. Some of you may remember the story or have heard the story about the, these four guys who carried their friend to see Jesus and the house was too crowded and they tore off the, the tiles on the roof in, in a Middle Eastern house and they lowered their friend down for, in front of Jesus and Jesus looked at the friend who was on a mat. The friend was paralyzed. He was paralyzed and he looked at him and he rather, rather, rather than initially say, you're, you're healed, you know what Jesus said? He said, brother, your sins are forgiven. And then everybody began to murmur. Like, who has the power to forgive sins? Who does he think he is? And Jesus, like, understood what they were thinking, what they were saying. And and he he said, which do you think was harder to say? Which do you think would be harder to say, get up and walk, or your sins are forgiven? And then he told the man to get up and walk, and the man was healed. You know what that did? That demonstrated to the people around him that Jesus probably did have the power to forgive sin. For us who know about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that demonstrates the power that he is God and has the power to forgive our sins. Imagine that for a second. That all of your past, all the stuff that you hope no one ever finds out about, washed clean. That that you're you're made holy, the Bible says. I heard a report the other night from, uh, it was from New York City, and it was an EMT, an emergency medical technician, and he was talking about the horror of what's going on during the COVID virus and how they're having to do triage for people. And I listened to this, and I I was like, 
amazed. And I, 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 it was so painful for me to hear this that I got up and walked around my dining room. I thought, what in the world? What they were, they were doing, he was explaining how some people who they would normally be able to help, now because of all the magnitude of what's going on, they, they can't help them. They can't save their lives. And so they're doing this thing where they, they hang a black tag on their foot that says that they're going to allow that person to die. And I thought, what? I started thinking about how our Heavenly Father must feel about all of us who are living, if you will, with a black tag on our toe. Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. That when we have sin, the just wage for that is, is death. It's like the enemy of God has hung a black tag on us. The wages of sin is death, but, but the gift of God is eternal life. And, and here's, here's what happens, that God sends his son, Jesus, to earth to live the perfect life so that he, when he dies, he could pay the penalty for our sin because he had no sin. It's like God saying, look it, I'll send my son you trust him, and the black tag will be removed, and you'll be given a white tag that says you're completely well. That's what forgiveness is. It's like the removal of the sentence of death on your life. It's like the promise that says, I will clean you. Do you think someone who has the power over the grave has the power to forgive you? I do. I'm banking my life on it. In fact, I know it based on the power of Jesus Christ that he has forgiven me. Here's the second thing I want us to not misunderestimate, not, not misunderstand or, or underestimate. It, it's that he has the power to make us new. He has the power to make us new, that, that God has this power to transform us. Let me read this passage for you. It, it, it's found in, in, the, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 through 19. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. <laughs> Let me say that again. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, the old is gone and new has come. There's another passage in, in the uh, book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. It says that, that, uh, that I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word transformed there is, is a, a Greek word that we would get metamorphosized, like, like changed, like transformed. Let me tell you a story about when I was a youth pastor. I'm going to call the kid Mike. It's not his name. But we were, we were on this re retreat, and he, he was the underclassman, and during those days, we still did this thing called initiation. I know, I know we're not supposed to do that, right? We're not supposed to do initiations anymore. But, but we had permission from him, the kid, because he had heard that we do initiations, and when you were initiated, when you finish the initiation, then you're in. Then you're accepted that you're part of the group. And so he came up to me and says, when they do the initiation, I want them to do it, Pastor Paul. And I said, okay. I go, oh, okay. And I went to the kids in the other room. I said, don't you dare hurt him. And so here's what they did. They, he was sleeping in his sleeping bag, and they took him and they duct taped his sleeping bag on both ends, and they lifted him up and they hung him in the rafters and duct taped him in the la rafters. The whole time I'm behind the door thinking, oh, I hope they don't drop him, I hope they don't drop him, I hope they don't drop him. And then they ran out of the room, and he was in there, and he was squirreling around like this inside the sleeping bag. And then I'm sitting there, and I'm like, do I go help him? Do I go help Because I didn't want him to drop from the ceiling. And then all of a sudden I saw this hand come out, and he unzipped the bag, and it came out like this, and he unzipped some more, and pretty soon, his whole body appeared out of the sleeping bag, and he swung his feet up on the rafters, pulled himself out, shook the bag off, and then dropped to the floor, and I looked at him, and I said, Mike, how are you doing? He goes, that was so cool, and I go, it was, it was really neat watching you. He goes, Pastor Paul, I feel like a new butterfly. I said, that's cool. Don't tell the other kids that. Right? Don't, don't, don't come out saying I feel like a butterfly. But he, he did. He felt like he had been made new. It changed the way he functioned in our youth group. He knew at that moment that he was a part of the team. 
He knew that he was accepted. And that's what God says. He says, I have the power through my love and through my care of you and through, through my love for you to transform you, to make you part of the family, to make you clean, to change you from what you were to what you are. Forgiven and made new. Don't underestimate the power of God's love in your life. I was talking to one of the people in our church and and they wrote me this little note. It says, being loved by God is like no other love I have ever experienced. He loves me unconditionally, no matter what mistakes I've made or continue to make. He completely and totally accepts me all the time. This person has a whiteboard on their door when they leave the house, and on the door it says this, God loves you just as you are. And then it also says, just think about how much you have grown and how much you are loved by so many. The power of God's love to transform somebody, to help them be a part, to help them be made new. Another person from our church writes this, it's like being the luckiest kid, getting the bestest gift ever in the whole wide universe. First, I'm chosen. Second, he draws me to his son who, by the way, came to save us. This same God offers me forgiveness and dies for me so I can live with him forever. Wow. He writes. Being loved by God is like having a best friend that I can share my innermost thoughts and fears with. However, the difference is that God already knows all about me and has a plan in progress to help me and lead me to my destination if I just trust him. It's comforting to know that although this journey is often difficult, It always has purpose. It may be as simple as opening my eyes or softening my heart, but the ensuing freedom that comes from God's work makes my life's wild ride meaningful. God has the power to make us new. I know some of us, we've we've been followers of Jesus Christ for a long time, and we feel like we're stuck. What if you just say to God, God, this is the area I feel stuck. Would you exercise the power of your resurrection and help me be made new? Would you transform me? God, I I could really use a new dose of joy. God, I could really use a new joy, a new infusion of compassion. God, I'd love for you to Change the past that I worry about. I was thinking about this, and I I know some of you will think, well, yeah, God can transform some people, but my past is so broken, so messed up. I was thinking about the Apostle Paul. His name used to be Saul. When he was Saul, his main goal was to destroy Christianity and people who follow Jesus. He was what I would call a religious terrorist, He was set out to to destroy followers of Jesus' lives, to to ruin their jobs, their families, even to stand by as they were murdered. You know what's amazing about God? God took Paul and transformed his life and made him new. Changed his name even, called him Paul. And he became one of the most zealous followers of Jesus Christ ever. Matter of fact, he wrote about half of our New Testament. God took a murderer, a crazy, zealous, spiritual terrorist. I'm guessing he could deal with you and make you new. Here's the last thing I want us to know just about the power of Jesus. He has the power to give our life meaning. He has the power to give our life meaning. Listen to this, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 13 and 14. If we are out of our mind, as some say it is, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ, love compels us. Here's what happens when you become a follower of Jesus Christ. It's, the, the love of Jesus is so amazing that you want to give the rest of your life to doing his work so that everyone would know, so that everybody who has a black tag hanging on their foot, spiritually, 
could be set free so that everybody would know about the forgiveness of Christ, so that everybody could know about the being made new, so that everyone would know that they have been loved by God who has the power to change everything. I mean, think about that. That when he comes to your life, he gives us a meaning that, it, that is amazing. Can you imagine what it would be like? Matter of fact, I, I, I've looked at all the reports of the people who have like, been hoarding Toilet paper. What's that all about? Like there, there's a guy, I saw a picture. His whole garage was filled with toilet paper. Who does that? Truckloads of hand sanitizer. Ooh, what's, what's that all about? Can you imagine being in a pandemic and withholding what the very people who are sick need? Like, like can you imagine... Having the answer to the virus, the vaccine, and withholding that? When God said he gives us meaning, we have the answer to the certain epidemic, the pandemic, the terminal pandemic of sin. It's Jesus. And he invites us like he invited the first one, go and tell, go and tell, go and love, go tell, make sure everybody you encounter knows about the love of Jesus Christ. That he'll give our lives meaning, that he'll give, give our lives full of hope, that, that we have this opportunity to make Jesus contagious for the love of Christ compels us. You know what that, the word compel means to be like squeezed on all sides because the love of Jesus is so amazing. We want everybody, everybody, everybody to know. You know, I wonder what would happen. Some of us who, who feel like our lives are just wandering. If we would just let God grip us. and give us meaning. I wonder if some of us who have our lives so turned upside down, what would happen if we just stopped underestimating the power of God to transform it? I wonder what would happen for those of us who are so worried about our past and the shame that's involved in there the guilt that's involved in it, if we just let the power of God clean it up and forgive us. I think it'd be amazing to start life new. I know a lot of us have heard about Jesus. He is the one who can conquer sin. He is the one who can conquer death. He is the one who can change anything in you. So let me ask. You want to be forgiven? Why don't you just say to Jesus, Jesus, because of your death on the cross, I would like to receive your forgiveness. feel like your life is just kind of like tipped upside down and you want to be made new again? Like he says, he says that our lives can be new creations. What if you just said, Jesus, there's a lot of old and broken and messed up in me. I'd like to place my life in your hands and would you do the work of making me new? I imagine some of us feel like our lives are kind of pointless. And God's inviting you to experience his love and to spread his love. To take, you know, we say this Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What if God puts you on the path of helping make whatever happens in heaven happen here on earth to help make the world beautiful 
to give your life meaning, to work for him. It's as simple as saying a little prayer. You can repeat it after me. Dear God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to earth. I believe Jesus was who he said he was and proved it by rising from the dead. I believe that Jesus died to pay for my sin. Please forgive me for my sin. I receive your forgiveness. I desire to know you as my Lord and Savior to put you in charge of my life. Thank you for your free gift of eternal life. Amen. So we'd love to hear about it. We'd love to hear about what God has done in you. Would you do us a favor? Would you just text I am made new to 474747? I am made new to 474747. And we'd love to give you some next steps on how to walk in relationship with Jesus. The Lord bless you.
So I can't imagine what it must like be like to, to like not walk with Jesus during this kind of time. Like, like, like there's so much unknown, so much unclear. He has the power to help you. He has the power to save you. He has the power to forgive you, to, to make you new. He has the power to give your life meaning. What if you just said, God, I don't understand everything. I, 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 there's so, but I'll, I'll surrender to you. I'll surrender to you. Just teach me how to walk and live with you. I'm wondering if we could try it again. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. One more to Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Go into the world and be a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ. Let God love you. Love him in return and love others in Jesus' name. May the Lord our God bless you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May our God who loves you lift up his counsel upon you, filling with his grace and granting you his peace. Go be church.